let us continue our discussion on contributions to equilibrium constant. In the previous lecture, we discussed how to get an expression for the number of molecules in the products or in the reactants. Reaction that we are talking about is R reactants in equilibrium with products. And we have come up with an expression something like this. Okay. So, our main aim is to get N p divided by N r. Now, number of products and number of reactant molecules. Our system was like this. This was for reactants and this was for products products and this difference is delta E 0. This is what we are talking about. And then we have various energy levels all this and that. This also has various energy levels and we are talking about their distribution. So, let us talk about summation I and I for reactants. This I am talking about for reactants. This is equal to number of moles of reactants. Okay, remember, I am talking about reactants. And this is equal to N by Q into summation. Let me put R because I am talking about reactants. I will just put R for reactants exponential minus beta E. I am just putting R. You can put small r, capital R, whatever. What are these E R? This energy E R or you can read this as E R whatever way you say. R I am reserving for reactants. So, that means when I talk about this and I measure the energy of any of the level of reactants that is with reference to the zero point energy of the reactant. This one gives me N R is equal to N by Q into this one is nothing but the partition function when you only consider the reactant molecules. What we have here? We have this n is the total number of molecules which are combined in the combined reactants and product sector. This is the combined for the combined system the molecular partition function. This is the molecular partition function which is only applicable to the molecules which are in the reactant side. Okay? Let us mark this as our equation number 1. Now, let us come towards the product side. Now, let us talk about products. That means, here I will use the same expression n i. I now I will change to product is equal to n product and this is equal to n upon q into I am writing for product exponential minus beta E p prime. Notice that I have put prime over here. I did not put prime over here. There is a reason why I did not put prime over there and I am putting prime over here. The reason for that is when you look at the products the zero point energy level of product is above the zero point energy of the reactants by delta E naught. And these energy levels are with reference to this zero point energy level. Once again, these energy levels of the products are with reference to zero point energy of the product which is shown over here. So, that means when I consider the combined system this E p prime is equal to E p 
plus delta E0 because for the combined system the zero point energy level is at this R level. Let us relook at what we should write now N P is equal to N upon Q into summation for products exponential minus beta that is what I am saying E p plus delta E 0 which is equal to N by Q into exponential of course summation p minus beta E p into exponential minus beta delta E 0 and this is equal to N upon Q and if you recognize this, this is Q of the products into exponential minus beta delta E naught. We have this expression for N P and we have this expression for N R. Now, you can take the ratio K is equal to N P by N R. So, N by Q, N by Q will cancel out you have q p by q r into exponential minus beta delta e naught. I will elaborate on this beta del e naught is equal to del e naught by k t and if I want to express per mole then I will multiply by n a. So, k times n a will become r. If I am expressing per molecule, then delta E naught by k t is enough and if I am expressing per mole, then I will multiply a numerator and denominator by n a. So, then this per molecule energy will become per mole and k will become r. So, what we have done is by the arguments of the number of molecules which are occupying the energy levels corresponding to reactants and the number of molecules which are occupying the energy level corresponding to product, we have come up with an expression which is same as that we get from the derived expression. But what is the key result of this and what are the key points that we should remember? One is that the value of k is dependent upon n p and n r and we have discussed that n p or n r is going to depend upon the population of each state. When I talk about population of each state that means we are talking about entropy and when I am talking about what is lying above what where product is lying above reactants zero their zero point energies are separated with a positive number that means we are talking about an endothermic reaction. So, basically K which decides delta G naught delta G naught is minus R T log K it incorporates what we derived what we discussed in chemical thermodynamics that delta G naught is a combination of delta H naught and delta S naught. Let us now take a very specialized specific example. In that example, let us consider that the reactant has only one ground state available. The other upper excited states are so far apart and the product has a uniform ladder of energy levels. The system that we are discussing here is R in equilibrium with B. We have reactants which has only ground state available. That means, can I write Q R which is equal to summation generally we write like this J G J exponential minus beta E J only ground state is there degeneracy is 1 
that means the value is equal to 1 because e0 e for j is equal to 0 the energy level is 0 therefore exponential 0 is equal to 1 for q reactant we know but for product what is given to us that it has a large number of evenly closed spaced levels careful examination says that this is a uniform ladder of energy levels that means when i talk about qp is equal to summation j exponential minus beta ej there here ej is equal to j times e because this each energy level is separated by e and j can start from 1 to 0 1 2 etc because the zero of this is lying above that of reactant by delta e0 we have already derived this expression we are not going to get into the details of that qp this is a uniform ladder of energy levels which is 1 plus exponential minus beta e plus exponential minus beta e square plus so on sum of a gp that means my q product is equal to 1 over 1 minus exponential minus beta e. We have derived this kind of expression earlier. I have an expression for q products and I have an expression for q reactant. Do not get confused by this rotation. This actually means q reactant and this actually means q of product. And we know their difference in zero point energy levels is delta E naught. And since I have both these Q's and I know delta E naught, now I can write an expression for the equilibrium constant. What is that equilibrium constant? It is equilibrium constant will be equal to QP over QR into exponential minus delta E naught by RT. We have just discussed that Q reactant is equal to 1. We have also discussed that Q product is equal to 1 over 1 minus exponential minus beta E. Now, suppose if the temperature is high or if energy levels are very, 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 very close compared to this th temperature, this spacing is very small or the temperature is high, then I can write Qp is equal to 1 over 1 minus, I can, since this is going to be small if temperature is high, then 1 minus beta E plus so on. This we have discussed earlier. This is equal to 1 upon beta E or is equal to kT upon E. This is a high temperature result. We have QP, we have QR. Substitute in this. QP is kT upon E. So, here we have kT upon E. QR is 1. So, do not need to worry into exponential minus delta E naught by RT. For this specific example, the expression for equilibrium constant is kT by E into exponential minus delta E naught by RT. Okay, we have derived some expression. Is this expression telling us anything qualitatively or quantitatively? Well, this particular expression only applies to the given condition. If the system given to you, if the system changes, remember that the corresponding expressions, final expressions are also going to change. This particular expression which applies to this system, now let us see what qualitative information we can derive from it. In industry, how to optimize a process so that you get a higher value of equilibrium constant or a higher value of yield 
is very very important now how to improve the value of equilibrium constant how to increase the value of equilibrium constant or how to decrease the value of equilibrium constant an equally valid question will depend upon various factors number 1 is the reaction exothermic or endothermic number 2 what is the stoichiometry of the reaction that is the value of delta ng we are talking about gas phase reaction the exothermicity of the reaction endothermicity of the reaction is going to guide us whether the temperature should be increased or temperature should be lowered similarly the number of moles participating in the reactants and the product will also tell us whether the pressure should be increased or pressure should be decreased and accordingly suppose if the reaction is endothermic you remember lee chatelier principle what is lee chatelier principle lee chatelier principle is that if a reaction at equilibrium is disturbed by an external factor then the reaction will shift in such a direction so as to undo the effect of the externally applied disturbance for an endothermic reaction according to lee chatelier principle if you increase the temperature the value of equilibrium constant also increases for an exothermic reaction on the other hand earlier i talked about endothermic reaction that is increase in temperature will increase the value of equilibrium constant for an exothermic reaction an increase in temperature leads to reduction in the value of equilibrium constant similarly you can talk about the effect of pressure total pressure is increased at equilibrium then also the reaction composition at equilibrium will shift according to lee chatelier principle that means it will move towards the direction where the pressure is lower the lee chatelier principle should also be applicable over here that means the discussion that we had should also be extendable to alteration in temperature and alteration in pressure the treatment that we are covering over here here in the expressions for example if you look at the expression for the equilibrium constant it has boltzmann constant it has absolute temperature it has energy that energy is the spacing between the adjacent energy levels of the product it has gas constant it has temperature and it has the difference in the zero point energy levels so we should be able to address the effect of temperature over here obviously when you are going to alter the temperature the population of the states here corresponding to p is going to change what is the prediction here this one where the zero point energy level of the product is higher than the zero point energy level of the reactant that means we are talking about an endothermic process if i increase suppose the reactant has some population and if i increase the temperature then the population of upper states is going to increase if the population of upper states that is the products is going to increase that is going to raise the value of equilibrium constant but is the same answer we can get from this expression that we can try to obtain by comparing this factor versus this factor the increase in temperature or the decrease in temperature 
is going to lead to what? Before I start discussing that, I want to reiterate that in statistical thermodynamics, what we have discussed is discussed equilibrium constant in terms of population of different energy levels. When I talk about population of different energy levels, that means I am also simultaneously addressing the entropy. And if at the same time I am talking about the delta E0, this delta E0, which is the difference in the zero point energy levels, that means here I am talking about exothermicity or endothermicity. Okay? So, if delta E0 is positive, the situation looks like this. If delta zero is D0 is negative, you should be able to redraw the similar figure if delta E0 is negative. We can address the exothermic reactions, we can address the endothermic reactions. So, in the next lecture, what we are going to discuss is that when we increase the temperature or when we decrease the temperature, then which factor becomes dominant and in which direction the equilibrium constant will move. Once again, obtaining an optimum value of equilibrium constant is very, very important in this study. And that is why the reaction conditions need to be modified so that you can achieve the desired results. Here, by using the concept of statistical thermodynamics, we are trying to explain that what is the effect of disturbance of external factors on the equilibrium constant. One such external factor that we are discussing at present is temperature. Therefore, the effect of temperature on any equilibrium becomes very important because depending upon exothermicity or endothermicity, the value of equilibrium constant will become higher or lower. More qualitative and quantitative insights into equilibrium constants are still possible from the derived expressions, but those we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much.